Wondrous creator, truth is proclaimed in every age by many voices. Direct in our time those who speak where many listen and write what many read, that they may do their part in making the heart of this people wise, its mind sound, and its will right and just. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion to adopt the agenda with an amendment, please. I would like to take um, item I, the consent calendar, and move it just below item F and item K on the agenda and move that below item I. Good evening, everyone. I have a petition for zoning amendment for, it's from the town of Clayton for Nathan and Caroline Cromie to, the current zoning is A2, they want, their proposed zoning is R1, and this will be referred to the Planning and Zoning Committee. And then I have two resolutions from other counties. Um, the first one, or they're both from Jackson County. The first one is a resolution advocating for an inpatient behavioral health facility for Northern Wisconsin. The second one is supporting or support of state investment for mental health funding. Both of those will, will be referred to the legislative committee. And then we have a commendation for David Schmitz. David Dave Schmitz began his career with the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office in 1989. Just shy of 35 years of service as a dispatcher, Dave took on many additional assignments throughout the years. He was a dispatcher in charge, a field training officer, a CPR instructor, a crisis negotiator, and a liaison to the fire departments in the county. He was a resident expert in the operation of the, in quotes, old mobile command post and could repair many things on fly with the tools of his, on his literal tool belt. Dave worked multiple shifts throughout his unprecedented 35 year career as a dispatcher at two different buildings and through countless radio and computer system changes and upgrades. As the initial point of contact for citizens in distress, Dave professionally coordinated the response of police, fire, ambulance, and other services to countless emergencies throughout his career. With his vast knowledge, experience, and longevity, Dave was a loyal employee who consistently placed the needs of the agency and citizens of Winnebago County above his own. Dave's service to the citizens of Winnebago County is both legal both greatly appreciated and deserving of recognition. Please join me in expressing our gratitude and best wishes as he enters his retirement. And that's it. Reports from committees, commissions, and boards. Uh, Supervisor Kemp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
Just so all of the supervisors are aware, tomorrow's uh, facilities and property management meeting will be at noon at our Knapp Street uh, facilities location. There are two items that are on our agenda that very well may be coming to this body next month that have to do with uh, loitering and camping on uh, county property. I would highly suggest that if you can't attend tomorrow's meeting that you at least uh, go and watch the video or, or check out the minutes from the meeting if, if po at all possible because we will have, uh, I'm guessing we will have people there who will be voicing their opinion much as they did at, uh, <clears throat> at their previous committee meeting, uh, judiciary meeting, and um, I think that it would uh, make it a lot, make things go a lot smoother if uh, everybody would pay attention to that and probably check on that last uh, GPS meeting as well because there was a lot of public input on, on these two items and I just wanted to make sure that you were all aware of that so hopefully we could eliminate some of the cross questions and, and everything else in this body because of it going through two committees. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Supervisor Gusterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Winnebago County Industrial Development Board met last week, uh, and we really went over some of the policies and procedures that the board operates with and looked at ways to possibly uh, make them more efficient or serve more entities within our county. So as it stands now, thanks to uh, our great finance director, I was able to get the number quite quickly. The IDB actually has the funds of $2,682,528. Uh, it seems that it's been kind of sitting out there for quite some time over multiple terms. And I think it's time that we start utilizing this money, especially right now as we continue to grow as a county. So keep your eyes uh, looking towards that. And we'd love to have your uh, input too going forward. Thank you. Supervisor Patterson. Oh, are we on? Okay. Um, I just want to give a brief announcement. The Veterans Service Commission is going to be changing the day and the time and the location of where it meets. We will now be meeting on the second Thursday of the month at 1100 hours or 11 a.m. for you civilian types. And uh, it'll be off at the Coughlin Center. So again, that would be the second Thursday of the month now, uh, 11 o'clock at the Coughlin Center. Uh, the one caveat is there is a, a veterans related meeting that precedes us so uh, by chance if that meeting does happen to run long we may have to delay the start but I've been assured that 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 would rarely ever happen so subject to any questions that concludes my uh, update thank you supervisor Hansen thank you mr. chairman the ad hoc task force on rules continues to to move forward our next meeting is on thursday september 26th at 4 30 at the albrecht building there's a couple of things that are going to be discussed um, supervisor cox has um, rule 3.8 um, amendment change and supervisor swan has a 3.4 so in that section i would really love um, for people to weigh in on those as we discuss them and move them forward. I think both are uh, merit for and against. Um, we will also be discussing uh, definitions. So if anyone has any change in definitions that they wish to bring forward, please let us know. Thank you. Supervisor Harrison. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first off is, uh, this Friday at 7.30, the health board will be meeting in Nina um, at the uh, Winnebago County Human Services Building. First time we've been there for that. Uh, second, right after it, at 9 o'clock, there'll be the public health vending machine unveiling press conference there. So if you get a chance, come on out there and see that. And the last thing I have is just it's kind of a little story, but a couple weeks back, I was able to chair for Human Services board meeting. And at that time, they were doing a presentation and an honoring uh, for foster parents, um, Chris and Mickey Cohen. Um, they had been here 35 years uh, and foster parents. And it was kind of neat because there was 25 to 30 people in the room um, waiting and we were waiting for them to come and they didn't show up until later. So what we did is I went around the room and asked them to say a little bit about themselves and why they thought this was important to be here. Uh, it was kind of heartwarming when you went around the room and listened to it. And if you happen to have an opportunity to listen to the tape or the recording, it'd be great. 
um, because there's so much said about them. Some people who had been there that had never met them before, just wanted to talk to them, had heard about them. It was really good. Um, the thing that kind of got me choked up a little bit, they didn't make it because she had an attack or COPD and she passed away on Saturday. So it was kind of sad, but it was good honor for 35. It's going to be hard to replace something like that. But I mean, life is short as it is. But if you get a chance, I, I would really listen to all the people, what they said, not knowing anything was wrong, how they, they related and, and had parts with her and him. And I think it's great. So I'd just like to honor them on that, please. Thank you. Supervisor Schellinger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Parkview Health Center Committee will meet at 3.30 this Thursday at the Coughlin Center. Uh, we will be getting a report from Baker Tilly, uh, who conducted a study uh, about the facility out there. I think it'll be a good one for folks to tune into, uh, either, again, either on the, the recording or uh, we'd love to have some folks come down and join us in person. Thank you. Supervisor Swan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The UWO Fox Cities Campus Board of Trustees will be holding a meeting next Monday, 1 p.m. at the Fox Cities Campus on Midway Road in Menasha. Okay. Next up. Next up will be the county executive's report. I got one of the old ones sitting here in front of me and I got lost. <laughs> I wasn't going to walk up until I was called. Uh, good evening. Uh, there is one agenda item report I'd like to discuss tonight. Um, it is on the consent agenda. Uh, but I suspect it might get pulled in is the, the boat launch uh, fee. Um, this is a, a long discussion on, on what we should do. I know last year we... <laughs> went to raise the fee a dollar to, uh, to make sure there's enough in the fund to kind of cover the maintenance of effort for our boat launches. Um, I think uh, the compromise that the Parks Committee came up with is a good one uh, to make sure that all boats that are going in are, are being charged for that. And, and I'm excited to see if that is uh, enough to keep us um, uh, to the point of, of keeping maintenance uh, to a level that outside of CIP to make sure that we maintain our boat launches. That was switched. The motion was, motion was made and seconded by Supervisor Hansen to switch Sorry, them. Yes. So I just want to say that I, I do support uh, the compromise. I think it's a very good uh, meet in the middle type situation and I applaud the Parks Committee for um, working, working to that. Um, and at this time I'll take any questions on that or any other uh, item on the agenda that you would like me to address. Is that for cars that are parking there as well, or is it just for people launching boats? So the question was the new boat launch fees for cars parking there or just people launching boats. Um, well, I'm guessing that'll get pulled, but it is for, historically we've only charged people that parked their boat trailers. Um, so this is for people that are, are launching boats. Um, I would refer to my parks director on kayaks and other things like that. I know that was part of the discussion. I want us to really capture more, more of that revenue. So before, if you weren't parking a trailer, we didn't enforce anything else outside of that. I do suspect that that will get pulled, pulled so there'll be plenty of discussion for that. Anyone else? Supervisor Hanson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
County Executive Damel, uh, I am going to ask that um, item six on the consent be pulled simply because I am absolutely undecided. So anything that you say or I'm looking forward to what the board members question and, and bring up on that. Thank you. Just for my clarity, that is the bolt launch fees. I mean, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> any other questions? Not seeing any. That's all we have for that part. All right. I'd like to move on to my appointments um, for the Workforce Development Board. Um, I have uh, Dustin Delsman, UA Local 400, um, who works in our region, and then Jose Martinez, uh, UMOS. Um, both are uh, referred by the Workforce Development Board to, to serve in this capacity. Did I hear motion? Motion made and seconded. Did you get the names? Any discussion? Any discussion? Not hearing any, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Carry. Thank you. Thank you. I do not have any excused board members tonight. The only one, um, we had one person that uh, called in, or I should say text in, and said that he would be watching. Supervisor Cassetto, is he on? He said, that's the only one, I, well, he's not on either, so. But he's the only one that notified me. So, um, a couple things I want to talk about, and one isn't on here, we brought it up last time. Notification of absentee on committee meetings, 24 hour notice. It would be really nice for any of you that can't make it to meetings to give a notice because if your chairman knows it, she can get a hold of myself, can replace one. If I can't make it, or if both got to make it, the vice chairman can also sit in and we will be voting members. So I ask you to at least 24 hours, I realize that sometimes sickness or other circumstances come up, but if you know at all that you're gonna make it, please be considerate of the committee because I know another committee that they had to cancel another meeting and I think they've had a, two of them or three, whatever, they've canceled them already. So, um, so myself, and then if you can't get a hold of me, Vice Chairman Fari, and if you gotta have two people, we both can sit in. So please call and let us know. The last thing, which I did not put on there, but we talked about last time, we did end up finding a bus, so we can go on the tour on the 14th. Um, we will be starting from the Coglin Center at 4.30, 3.30, 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Okay, that's what uh, it's, well, minutes were, that's what, what time you wanted to start. So we'll be starting from there, and then we'll go from there, we will head to Amro, and see the new community center, which we put a lot of money into there through the ARPAs. And then we'll go over to the Waka Dam site, which we've heard a lot through the parks and that, all the money that's gotta be gone into there, and the grants and this and that. One of the parks people are going to be out there to see, uh, uh, meet with us. And then we'll be going around to Winnie County, seeing the projects that they've done over there, and looking at that. And then we'll be going into Wood Eyes and having a uh, light lunch or meal um, and just you say IDB was brought up but IDB helped get what I started so uh, I'm sure that they will go ahead and talk a little bit about that that night and anything else so um, we're kind of hitting all different aspects and rather than just um, the jails and all this and that this time so it's kind of what you wanted you wanted to go ahead and see different things so we're kind of making that loop over in that area and then we'll be back as soon as possible or as soon as you all want us to be and, and uh, come back. So, S Supervisor Hansen, 14th, isn't it? 14th, the 14th would be the um, Monday before the meeting. Yes. So what we want now is we want a list. Um, how do you want to do it? Have them both. Okay. If you want to raise your hand because to have a meal at Wood Eyes. They're going to be very generous and do us a good job, I'm sure, and be uh, very realistic with the price. We need to give them some kind of account. So, so if you want to raise your hand, if you plan to go, that's good. Okay, the clerk's going to just run down the list and say aye or nay or 
I if you're going, nay if you're not. What time is dinner? Three o'clock, we'll be leaving. Dinner's four to five, five o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. So Rachel's Okay, Supervisor Locks. Mm -hmm. So, no, in the morning. So, in the morning. Yes, sir. In the morning. Yes or no? Will you be attending? Yes. Supervisor Albrecht. Let you go. Thank you. Supervisor Lutz. Yes. Yes. Supervisor Weiss? No. Staff. Supervisor Stafford? No. Supervisor Patterson? Yes. Supervisor Gabbert? No. Supervisor Bender? Yes. Swan? Yes, uh, okay. That's okay. Fully Okay. Supervisor Gilbertson? Yes. Um, Supervisor Miller? Yes. Supervisor Halbert? Yes. Supervisor? No. Supervisor? No. Supervisor? Yes. Supervisor? No. Yes. Supervisor Kari? No, I don't believe I can. Supervisor Harrison? Yes. Supervisor Hansen? Yes. Supervisor Egan? Yes. Supervisor O'Brien? Yes. Supervisor Nelson? Yes. And Supervisor Miller? No. Thank you. So Supervisor Nussbaum has a question. <laughs> Supervisor Nussbaum has a question? Um, Julie, can you check and see if the highway committee is meeting then? Anyone else have any questions of me? Okay, if not, we'll keep right on going here. Uh, consent. IT over here talk to me. IT. They would request your presence over there. Supervisor Nussbaum, did you have something else? No, I'll just look at
Right. Right. Great. Yes. Oh. Supervisor Holt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I hope it's not too late to ask this clarifying question. Thank you. Uh, UW Oshkosh Fox City's Campus Board of Trustees, I understood to be September 23rd, uh, but it's on our digital calendar for the 30th. Can I get clarification on that? That should have been changed to the 23rd. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll be going into consent agenda now. Now, before it's approved, we've already had number six be pulled. Anyone else? If not, I ask Vice Chairman Fari to go ahead and move for the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the consent agenda as submitted with the exception of number six. Second. Second. <laughs> Motion made and seconded to approve the Consent agenda with the exception of item number six. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Carried. So we'll go right to number six. I'm in Winnebago County General Code, chapter 10.241, parent 11, boat landing trailer park permit fees to include the proposed modified by replacing boat landing trailer parking permit with boat launch use permit fees. Um, let's see, who would that be? Hmm? Okay. That'll have to be brought in by Supervisor Hanson, though, if he wants. He's the one that has to have it brought out. But he's the one that pulled it. But I will, I will give it to you before, but he's asked to pull it. And he don't seem to want to, so I'm going to turn to you. Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, um, I move the for the resolution number 031-092024 on the boat landing trailer parking permit fees. Motion made and seconded. So they can call up their names. We're beyond concern. Oh. Supervisor Swan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I called uh, Director Breest about this earlier to get some background for uh, you know how this came about and this change. I would ask uh, Supervisor Powers first if she would like to explain this in more detail. If not, uh, first, if she would do that, but otherwise I would ask if the Chair could ask the Director up for an explanation on this. Is that possible? I think Supervisor Powers is. She to has the jurisdiction first. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would pass this on to Adam Brees uh, to explain it. Thank you. Okay. Does Department Head Brees want to come up?
Would you like me to give a brief overview, yes, uh, Supervisor Swan? Why it came about and um, to you know clarify uh, the fee structure. I believe there's no change with that, and um, you know I'll talk about also uh, the, the history of the um, funds that went out of the the landing fees for for buoy installation and removal. But you can start just by with a summary. That's yeah. If I miss anything, so. definitely let me know. Okay. Um, so just kind of summarizing where where we started with this uh, proposed change. This goes back to November, early December of last year of uh, 2023, and uh, we had a resident um, reach out to us with a concern about our uh, current ordinance. Um, reached out with some information on NR 191 with Wisconsin DNR and how that statute refers to um, that you can charge for boat launch, uh, you can charge boat, boat launch fees um, when utilizing um, a boat launch um, it within, within the state. And um, so that brought up some questions. I worked with Corporation Council um, and the residents also in, in speaking with them as well, and all these residents are users of the boat landings. Um, some of them were active, for instance, in the Grumman boat landing uh, project. Um, and their concern also from their end is that um, those users who are utilizing the boat launch, let's just say a commercial company for instance, commercial company A comes, utilizes the boat launch, maybe uses a barge, a larger boat, they come, they launch their boat, they leave. Um, in our current ordinance, it's a uh, parking fee. So there is no fee currently for that larger vessel, I mean any vessel, but that's just one example. Um, to come utilize the launch and then leave. They're still utilizing the launch. They may be using the bathroom. Um, they, some of the facilities that we have to maintain and um, take care of. Um, so when looking at both state code um, with Corporation Council and when looking at what some neighboring communities are doing, City of Oshkosh um, also does say boat launch fee, not parking fee. Now there are some other communities on um, the DNR said they would be reaching out to that still have parking fee. Um, but as staff, we felt it was beneficial um, that any person launching a boat or a kayak um, or a water vessel, um, to use a more general term, to pay to utilize the landing. Um, so it's not just the users. So if you own a house on the lake or if um, you know, and you're launching your boat at the beginning of the year and you're bringing it back at the end of the year, you're still utilizing the county facility. Um, just like those users who are parking their car um, in the parking lot. You're still driving through the parking lot. You're still using the launch. You're still using the bathroom. Um, you're still using the buoys in front of the launch, which the buoys just that we would have for the launch itself. Um, like if we got rid of the launch, those buoys would be gone. Those do get paid for for installation by the, um, the users as well as any of the floating docks. So if someone's launching their boat but leaving, they're still using those floating docks. Um, and I can tell you the three we put in at Grunman were $100,000. Um, it takes money to maintain them, to move them in and out with a crane each year. Um, so just some of those types of things. And to, I know one of the other points you had was with the fee. Um, there is not, you, it, within the, the changes, there's no proposal to change the fee schedule. So I, might, I might just chime in on the fee issue. So you've left the fees the same, including the senior three-year pass, which is good. I had a constituent that was concerned about that. But uh, so you would use your park rangers to enforce launches and potentially recover some of the income you would have expected by the fee increase through launch fee uh, enforcement, correct? Correct, we would create signage and then as our rangers are out at the station, if people are launching but not parked, they would also check to make sure that they also have a pass. Okay, and I would, I would expect then, especially on like Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day weekend, you would have a ranger there because everyone uses that launch to take their boat out or bring it in at the beginning of the season and take it out at the end will now have to pay a launch fee. Yes, we actually do have ranger, our rangers very specifically work, and they alternate, but they uh, very specifically work the holidays. We make sure that we have someone on the holidays because they're busy time, whether it's Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day. Um, okay. Because, yeah, those are the two big in and out um, holidays you're referring right. to Memorial Day and Labor so Day. So I guess, you know, this addresses the issue of as long as you're leaving the fees the same, it satisfies the needs, I think, of my constituency for now. Um, I'm assuming in the future that could change. But, you know, what I, what I still don't like is that you guys took all that money for, not you guys, but, you know, past 
administrations took so much money out of that boat landing uh, uh, reserve fund for installation and removal of buoys, which was 80000 a year for 20 years. So we're, that money's gone, but will it ever be refunded into that, into that boat launch fund for more improvements? Is the question I'm asking. Is, is, that, is that a sunk cost now, or are we going to actually, you know, think about recovering some of that money and restoring it? That's my question. And I, I mean, I can't speak, so I could speak for the time I've been here. So I, I started in uh, May of 2021. Right. Um, at that time in 2021's budget, the buoys were within the boat landing fund. Right. Um, my first budget year and actually um, Executive Damel's first budget year, we proposed moving all buoys that are not directly correlated with the landings um, to the general fund and as a separate, okay. well, we already had the account set up, but basically moving that that amount to okay. the general levy. Um, We're not so we the only county on the lake. Fond du Lac County's on this lake, Calumet, and so is out of gaming. Why aren't they helping us pay for those buoy installation and removal fees on the on the river chain and the upper lakes? They use them too, right? They do. We only operate or we only install and remove within Winnebago County property or limits. Yeah. Um, but it's, don't it's, on riparian, the lake. it's riparian rights. It's it's on the waterway. So, you know, whoever has shoreline, shoreline, whatever county has shoreline on this river and lake system should be helping, in my opinion. But that's, that's, that's my opinion. So that's, a, that's basically all I have to say. I think, you know, you've addressed larger concerns of not having a fee increase by hoping to recapture some of that revenue through launch. That's fine with me. I think that's good. Thank you. Supervisor Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For, for Director Breest and um, anyone on the committee, I am certainly not looking to raise fees. I am curious the question, um, you obviously feel that they're adequate. Um, so I'm not quite sure how to, how to phrase it. Um, I, again, I'm not looking to necessarily raise fees. I just want to make sure we're covered. Um, so currently, the last three years, we've averaged about thirty to forty thousand in the positive at the end of the year. Now, I want to be careful with that in the sense of, for instance, this year um, we're using some of those reserve funds to then put back into the bowl landing, which is the purpose of that. Um, so, for instance, this year we're spending one hundred twenty-five thousand through the reserve funds um, to repair the Eureka bolt ramp, um, the concrete. Um, going into the river, so we are averaging about thirty to forty thousand in the positive to be able to build towards projects like that. Poygan's definitely next. Um, we have uh, we had Highway put a Band-Aid on a, on the rebar and the sa a safety concern out there, um, but that'll be another landing that'll pro it's about double the size of Eureka, so probably more in the two hundred thousand range in in a few years. Thank you. You probably mentioned that to me before, and I forgot. Thank you for clarifying. Um, I think that's all. Supervisor Schellinger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Director Brees. So are, do, you, do you have an ex expectation uh, about how many more boat launch fees you're going to collect? We don't from this. I mean, the, the two two factors that we the reason where we proposed this was number one more the the fairness for all users um so we and we don't know quantifiably you know how many are are currently paying i mean we're, we're giving tickets to those that don't pay when it's parked um but vice versa and then um was the was the state statute or was the state 191 getting more in line with that but in general you expect to collect more we would expect to collect okay. definitely some more um, I think so. I think this is all fine. I think um, uh, I just think when we have resolutions like this, we you know we have we have a note on line 34 that there's no fiscal impact. But I think we know there is something uh, you know some fiscal impact from that. Um, I think this is something we see a lot with uh, with either fee increases or policy changes that increase the ability to. To collect fees, um, but it would be nice to see you know see some estimation of what we you know what we think um, to to you know I think that would help 
look at some of those questions uh, that have been that have been brought up by other supervisors. Um, but thanks, thanks so much. All good by me. Supervisor Locks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, forgive my ignorance on this question. Um, there's a bolt launch on A between Nina and yep. Oshkosh. Is that county owned? Yes, that's the Grunman bolt landing, and that one, that's oh. county owned. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Supervisor Gustafson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director, to help help refresh me here. I just want to make sure. Do we have any data on resident versus non-resident use of these launches through a year? We do in terms of the yearly passes, and I apologize, I don't have those right in front of me. Um, I could absolutely send those, we have those on hand. Um, in terms of daily, we don't charge a difference between resident and non-resident, so that we wouldn't know. Okay. But yes, I could absolutely um, share that with the board. Okay, thank you. Yep. Supervisor Bender. I'll just say that I had a point of voters talk to me about the snowmobilers. We don't charge the snowmobilers to, to use the launch, and if we need to basically raise revenue in the future, that's something we'll need to look at because you go out there on a weekend, especially when sturgeon spearing and, you know, they got the fishing tournaments out there. The boat launches are, are full of snowmobile trailers and they're using the, the, the launches to go off of. They're taking their ice shanties off, off the launches. And what the boaters are saying is if our fees are paying for that launch, there's no reason why they can't help subsidize that. So if we ever want to raise them boat launch fees, I, I think we'd have to tap into that revenue too. I don't think it's fair to charge one person to use a launch and then all winter somebody else can use the launch for, for nothing. So, you know, in the future, if the fees need to go up, we have the pay stations out there right now, so there's no manpower. They just basically put their $7 in, just like the border would do, and they can basically take their snowmobile and go off there, or they can drive off there with their car and, you know, take their ice shanty out there. So if we need more revenue in the future, I think that's the avenue that we need to go. I think we need to leave the boaters alone. They pay enough. Supervisor Gabbard. Just some clarity, Adam. You're very good at this. So we have a lot of fishing tournaments that take place, a lot of out-of-state. Are those people paying or are they not? Um, so we, if we do see, we, we, we know when the fishing tournaments are, um, so our rangers are out those days. Um, and I know I'm just off the top of my head when looking at tickets this year, we're, we do get some from out of state. Fee. Correct. Okay. Yes. And then if someone just comes into the boat landing and parks and has a picnic, they're not going to pay any fee. Is that correct? At least per the, the proposed, no. Per the proposed. Um, okay, and kayaks are included in this too. If you're launching a kayak, they would be launching. Yep, yeah. and you know, for instance, a good um, example is like how Grunman also has like the ADA kayak launch. I mean, okay, um, so there's some wear and tear and maintenance on that as well. Okay, so that's that's all. That's so in a resident, and I live on the lake, so I'm going to put my two cents worth in. When I launch a boat, I I get the pass and I have to do whatever. And maybe I only launch in spring, take it to my house, put it in the lift and come in the fall. So that happens more than you think it would happen. Not everybody can launch their boat other than at a, a boat landing. Um, and those people seem to be okay with this because they need a place to launch their boat, um, whether it be in the river or whatever. And I know the last time we went around with this, there were a lot of people that came in and said, eh, we, we go to Oshkosh, it's cheaper or whatever. Um, but you are gonna charge the kayakers or the rubber rafts or whatever. You're, and are your rangers county employees or are they DNR? Um, our rangers are county employees under the and Parks Department. And they're only for the season. They're, they currently work from about, I mean, it really depends on when ice is out, but typically about April through beginning of November. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. How, uh, how, how do you share this revenue that you're taking in with the DNR? How does that work? We don't share any revenue with the DNR in terms of from our daily, in fact, so all the daily or season pass revenue we bring in actually is in a segregated boat launch 
account. So it doesn't even go into the general parks account. It's just for boat landings. So when launched, when, <clears throat> when a boat is launched, the DNR doesn't take any kind of a share off of that launch dollar, or the dollars no. that are used in launching. Yet you have, you have been defining this as a parking pass. It would seem to me that it should have been all along a launch pass to cover the, you know, the movement of boats on and off the water. We have something similar at Fox Crossing where we have a launch and parking pass that gets us to a certain area where we can park our cars, which is a lot easier than taking them down the street and parking them because we happen to have a kayak or whatever. I'm just wondering if that's defined enough so that people know when the parking launch pass is on the car or on the on the trailer that they're able to, you know, park where the trailers are supposed to be parked, I would imagine. And the you're, other, you're talking about if someone had a car, not a, not a trailer? Yes. Yes, yep. We, we have designated car stalls at every one of our landings as well. So if you just come with a car with a kayak, maybe in the, or like a pickup truck with a kayak in the back, you could park in one of the car stalls as well. But you're not taking up space on the trailer parking Correct. areas. As much, as much as possible, Asylum Bay, Poygan, but Poygan usually, Asylum Bay would be the big one that our, our parking, and even Black Wolf a little bit, is only so big. Um, both of those get full very frequently, um, so sometimes there's very few spots to park. So sometimes we run into some issues there. Um, with Asylum, there's a lot of road parking. With Black Wolf, there's really no alternative. Once that parking lot fills, you have the busy county road. How is your signage? Is your signage pretty defined? Yep, we have signs that say car parking only. And obviously, too, the, the stalls are much smaller. Thank you. Supervisor O'Brien. Yeah, I just, uh, just, this is kind of timely because I just recently ran into someone at the boat launch at Leonard Point. And, um, and they're pulling their machines in from the, you know, from the, from the summer. And, and the, the idea was like, look, it's nice to be able to do this and not pay for this 10 minute transaction that's happening here because look, I pay all of this taxes for my, for my waterfront property. So when I want to bring the, the jet skis over or whatever, it's nice to be able to do this. And, um, you know, it's, I, I feel like, you know, there's that kind of happens. That's really what we're going after here. Right. I mean, it seems to me that like, that's what that, this is all about. And I just, I don't know, I think it's a nice amenity to have to, to kind of, like, I don't know, just not charge them. That's all I have. Supervisor Burrow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director, uh, two questions. One is, I see that the effective date is September 17th. And my question is, does that coincide with the season? You just talked about your rangers running through November. Is there a better date? In other words, do it at the end of the season so people are aware of it, have time to think about it, and know it's coming versus I pull up there and all of a sudden it's changed? It, it's going to, yeah, and this was drafted from our um, original meeting back in early August. So there was a little difference in timing. Um, it's going to, we're going to have to, like Grunman, we held off on doing any new signs after mm -hmm. a renovation, waiting to see if this would happen or not. Um, and a lot of our signs are worn out, so we're going to be replacing a lot of signs over the winter that will, if this were to pass, reflect this, or we would just create new signs per the now, the current ordinance. Okay, so and, there would be, it wouldn't be enforced. I mean, it would be very difficult to enforce it until next year anyways, okay. by the time it's all passed. Thank you. And I did, I did a general comment. Uh, Supervisor Schellenberger talked about financial impact. One thing I think we want to consider is how are we going to communicate this? And from a constituent perspective, if there's impact in constituents, is there a way they can find out earlier? So for example, if I buy an annual pass of some sort, it would be nice to know in a letter that this is coming. I think that would be just from a, just from a courtesy perspective. So just a consideration. OK. 
Yep, thank and you. we can definitely get marketing out there. Thank you. And the word. Supervisor your hands. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I just kind of want to piggyback off of some things that uh, Supervisor Gustafson and Supervisor Gabbert talked about. Um, I think we need to know those uh, numbers for out-of-state users because I think we're doing ourselves a disservice by not utilizing the tourism factor and saying maybe it's a dollar more per launch or maybe it's two dollars more. I don't, don't want to do something exorbitant, but something extra so that way the tourism also helps pay for the helps helps pay for these things. It just it just seems like you know we have the, we have so many tournaments where people come in from all over the country, and if they're going to be utilizing you know our launches and whatnot, why 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 don't we may help make our launches better? For their even for their benefit in the future so just something to think about thank you yes. supervisor patterson thank you mr chair i i just i apologize for not really knowing exactly how this works but i'm looking over here at the payment of violation and the time limits in that section over there and, and i'm just kind of curious if i were to get a ticket or a violation on friday afternoon what methods by which would I be able to complete that payment by Sunday afternoon? So uh, you know, uh, uh, it's postmarked. So there's an envelope. So like if you get a ticket and it's put on your windshield, there is, um, a, an, a, it's basically got an envelope um, that you send back to us. So okay. as long as it's postmarked, um, as long as it's turned in over the weekend, so then it probably comes postmarked that. by Monday. Then. Yeah, I mean it's. We work with we work with you know we can okay. see the data when those tickets were. Yeah, I just didn't know out. if they were supposed to pay like at the drop boxes or, or at the county. No, it gets or mailed or back in. To, okay. Yep. All right. Thank I you. I mean, they can come to our office, but most people, because of how large the county is, they're not very close to the Coughlin building, so they typically mail it. All right. Thank you. Supervisor Halber. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, is there any launch data like? how many boats are launched per season versus like uh, the other supervisor was talking about, like the snowmobiles that use the launch. Is there any data for us to look at? Like, because if, if like what he was saying, we did propose something for the snowmobile users, which I think was a great idea. Uh, we would kind of need to know what we're looking at that that could double or triple the revenue coming in from the launches. So we do, um, when I first started, uh, my first year we purchased, so we have about two years worth of data. Um, we don't have them at every landing just because of the cost of them, um, but we're gonna start moving them around. So we have car counters at Grunman, Butamore, and we have to adjust ours at Black Wolf because it was catching the highway. Um, so we do have, and, we, and Asylum. Now Asylum's tricky because there's not a good way to put a car counter there that doesn't count all the cars coming on the road, and that's a very, You'd be surprised how many people come down there every day. So we do have, between Grumman and Butamore alone, and this is off the top of my head, I apologize, um, but we do have data, I believe it is about 100,000 cars per year between those two landings. Now those are two of our more popular landings. Um, and we do, our car counters count by the, the time in the day. So we can actually extract that data to see what's in winter versus what's, I mean, by the day, by the month. So we can, we can pull some data or start getting dangerous with some of that data. Um, we'll start moving some of these car counters and put them out for a year at Poygan and Boom Bay and some of these other landings to really get better data at all of our landings. But we've started compiling data, yes. If we go through with this ordinance, though, is there a way to position those counters so that they're counting only the launches? Because if we're not charging for parking anymore, we need to know what's actually going in and out of the lake, not what's just driving into the, the parking areas. It picks up a radius, um, and it picks up metal as it passes by, at least our current counters. Um, we use infrared counters on our trails to get some data there. Um, there might be an infrared option that we could point across the, the landing, but right now it's, it's more of a, I mean, it still gives us a very good idea. Not too many people come down to Grunman, for instance, out of the way to just drive down and circle out. There are definitely some. There are definitely some that would do that, that don't launch. But it does give us a good, you know, we could probably take 20% 20, 20 off those numbers to get a good idea of who's really launching versus who's just driving around, circling, and coming out. Okay. Thank you. Could you make that data available to us? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. I usually share it with the Parks Committee a couple times a year. Supervisor Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, let me just say I appreciate all the time and effort you put into this. 
let's be kind of honest. This is a little bit of a money grab. Um, I'm sure the revenue will go up. There's people that use the launch. They live a mile down the road. They slip in there for five minutes. They're down the road. They don't cause any problems, any issues. Um, and now they got to pay the seven bucks for that five minutes. Um, Winnie County's doing quite a bit of remodeling in our park and our parking basically for the cars. We're spending 500,000 to add more blacktop and double the size of the boat and trailer parking. And we aren't putting anything into the boat launch. It was concrete. It was poured 30 years ago. It's still in perfect shape. So the boat launch per se is not the expense of this. It's the providing enough parking area for the boats and the trailers. The guy that slips in there and drops his boat and is out of there isn't really creating a huge cost. Out on Lake Poygan, we have two businesses during the winter that are thriving. They charge three to five dollars for anybody to go out with their car, their ice shanty, their snowmobiles. It's a fee to access the lake. And the Poygan boat launch sits there. It gets used a lot until one of the businesses plows it full so nobody can use it. They got to pay to use the, the private one. So, um, boy, if we're going to go to this launch fee, then you really have to take a serious look at all of the winter activities that uses that same launch and justify how they can all use it for free and the people during the summer that are using it for less time now have to start paying for it. And I, I appreciate what you're all trying to do. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just, I think we're kind of opening up a huge can of worms that's going to come back and bite us somewhere down the road. Thank you. Supervisor Harrison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a few questions so I can learn something here. Sailboats are included in there, right? Correct. Okay. How many boat launchers do we have? Seven. And how many rangers do we have? Two. Okay. So all I'm thinking there is it, how do you, you know, how do you keep track of all this and there's going to be some you miss, right? I mean, or tell me about the incident. You know, the, there's only two of you. There's a boat tournament going on. There's 150 boats out there and the rangers say, now how, how is he going to be able to make sure he catches everybody? It, with our current schedule and our current budget, we have um, the two rangers. They're out five days a week. In each day they're out, they go to every landing. So that's our, at least our current, and we're on track to hit our budget this year. That's a lot for two people, right? Yep. Okay. Right. Thank you. Vice Chairman Fari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Adam, as I'm listening to the discussion, uh, I'm referring back to the county board report uh, and in the background uh, paragraph you state that uh, this ordinance was adopted primarily under administrative rule uh, NR 1.91 is that correct that was one of the driving factors correct well as you read that <clears throat> uh, basically they told us we can't charge for parking but we can charge for launching a boat I'm not seeing anything about launching a snowmobile. So you might want to check into what actually constitutes the authority for a launch of a piece of property. Just, just a thought. Yes, if we, if, if we would do anything with winter, and I know it's been mentioned a few times because staff has actually been thinking about that as well, and we do, the biggest complaint I receive in the winter is that from boat users that winter users are using it without having to pay. Mm -hmm. I would have to look exactly into yeah, more details if we that. could. Yes, sir. Correct. Is there anyone on Zoom? No. No. Not. Okay, I didn't see your light. I'm sorry. Supervisor Lutz. So, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we're 
what are we, what are we paying our two rangers? Right now, um, sixteen dollars and sixteen fifty for the second year. It's eleven thousand total is our is our budget, not including FICA. So about about twelve thousand total between the two rangers for the year. Really? Oh, I would have thought it would have been more than that. So, because I, I was I was curious. You said we're making forty thousand dollars a year off these boat launches. <coughs> So some of that's going, that's, I assume that money's covering these rangers fees also. Or, Correct. All the money covers the rangers fee, ranger fees, you know, the dock installation, buoy installation, cleaning of bathrooms, um, the mowing, um, mm -hmm. the portable restrooms. There's a lot of other expenses that are in the... But those fees wouldn't go away anyway. Not, I mean, if, if this is all the rangers are actually doing is monitoring these boat ramps, right? So I, but the point I'm getting at and, is... And cleaning some of them. They do touch they on do the bathrooms else. that we have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. And, and honestly, since we did the pay stations, there are also our eyes and ears out there. So now we have someone out at our boat landings, every boat landing five times a week, which is also very beneficial for means. Perfect. Thank you. Supervisor Gustafson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a question come up in this regard. Is How time sensitive is this? because I think there were a lot of good questions asked tonight, especially, again, leaning back on the winter side of if we were to flush this out a little bit more before it came back to the board rather than absolutely adopting, or if, I mean, can't, can't, force, can't force a committee to take up, obviously, the next leg of this uh, if we are gonna go down the route of winter and, again, addressing the fees, but is there some sort of time sensitiveness to this resolution tonight? Um, as was, was asked before, actually, more than likely enforcement's not going to be till next year, till anyways. Um, time sensitive at this exact. Now, if we we're considering winter um, and any modif looking at any potential modifications, if that's even possible, that's obviously more time sensitive um, because that's closer than we think. So. Sure. Sure. And kind of talking along that timeline, too, of rather than effective today, more more or less effective January 1st of 2025. Right, if, if there were, if we were to do anything with winter, you know, come back workshop at that type of thing, um, you know, we'd want to kind of, to the notice part of, even for the boat landing users, we, we'd, it would be smart anyways to give time for people to know. So with that, and not feeling a whole lot of pressure, and I think there's still some uneasiness on this, I would actually make the motion to refer this back to committee. Made and seconded by Nelson to refer this back to committee. Right. All right. There'll be no more discussion then because it's been referred back. So. Discussion is over. Motion made and seconded to refer back. So I'm going to go back here and <coughs> Supervisor Nussbaum referring it back. Yes. The committee spent plenty of time on this. No, the staff no. thinks it's a good thing. The committee thinks it's a good thing. I think we should just vote on it. Supervisor Rankin. Uh, my question is for uh, Director regarding uh, winter access to the uh, the ramps. Corner border. Corner border. Corner border. Corner border. Going, no. It's on that going back now. That's yeah. And you were lit up, but they had already made that motion. So. Right. Uh, Vice Chairman Ferry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I really believe. Uh, uh, the point of amending this ordinance is to uh, delete the language parking fee and adopt the language uh, boat launch, which is a requirement of administrative rule from the DNR. So uh, I certainly su not support sending it back. 
and I believe we should deal with it tonight and make an affirmative decision to approve it. Thank you. Supervisor Dowling, we bring it back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do not support bringing this back to committee. The Parks and Rec Committee had a very lengthy discussion about this, and actually almost every question that was asked on the floor tonight was already discussed in committee. We also had a community member who took the time to go through this document, make and submit changes, and work with um, Director Breest on this as well. Um, during that meeting, we only had two community members show up and they were not against this. So uh, if it is gonna go back to, to committee, I'd like to see everyone that asked a question tonight to show up. Supervisor Locks, going back to committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think somebody already said this. It, it sounds like it's really, it wasn't, charging for parking at a launch doesn't, really makes sense it's just changing it to what it should have been all along it seems to me thank you supervisor sir hansen about going back to committee yes thank you mr chairman um, supervisor gustafson brings up an important point but as does supervisor nussbaum and dowling so i would echo that if this does go back um, that if you do have questions, please go to the committee so that it's hammered out there rather than coming back and being hammered out here a second time. Thank you. Supervisor Holt, going back to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree that it should not go back to committee. Uh, we do need to make these changes tonight. And if we, I mean, there have been plenty of great ideas on other things to consider and also from a financial impact standpoint understanding what the choices we make uh, will do in the future i think those are all fair questions that um, the committee can review and discuss but regarding this specific action i think we can vote on it tonight supervisor marco going back to committee yeah thank you mr chairman <clears throat> um just to make it clear um what we're trying to do today is changing the wording to boat launch use permit fee. Is that what we're trying to do? Um, I think we should go ahead and vote on this um, to, tonight because even if we add snowmobiles or um, shanties or whatever, that can be added on later. What we want to do is anybody accessing that boat launch um, we're looking to chart or changing the boarding for boat launch not um, parking so I say I, I go ahead and um, and vote on this tonight Supervisor Sir Hintz going back to committee thank you mr. chairman <coughs> excuse me this this is um, as far as I understand it, this is a verbiage change and it's required. And for that reason, I believe that we should vote on this tonight. And I also believe that Director Breest and the committee have heard all of these ideas and, and other things for this. And I, believe, and I have full confidence that they will bring those up and take those up on their own because we've made it quite clear how we all feel on this. So I will not support uh, sending this back to the committee. Supervisor Gustafson? Withdraw my motion, I guess. Call yeah. a question. Oops. Just hold on. There's only been a motion to withdraw. There hasn't been a second. 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 All right. Call That's a question you. on the main you, you motion. Know, I, you've got to wait your turn. I've got a list of people here. We go down the list, and you've got to get your light on. That's been on for an hour. Well, <laughs> I would take you in order here, so. Um, so that is off the table now. That is off the table as of now. So the next one with their light on is Supervisor Burrell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I, I would suggest let's vote on it as, as it exists. It puts us in compliance. And let's take the input. People talk about winter and deal with that separately and bring that back in the future as an addendum. Thank you. Supervisor Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I call a question Second. on the main motion. 
Motion has been made and seconded. On the amendment of the Winnebago County General Code, Chapter 19.24, Parent 11. Motion made and seconded. I think we've had enough discussion, but I'll ask one last time. So, so now what we'll do first is, is calling the question. Yes, call the question. Right. So is there a second? And it's been seconded. We had a motion made and seconded. I've already got a motion made and seconded for that. All those in favor of calling the question signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. It's passed. Thank you. Now we go to the main motion. Now, are we ready now? Now we're back on the original amended Winnebago County General Code Chapter 19.24, Parent 11. Any discussion on that? No, there's no. There's no. No, we just vote. I request a report of vote. Yeah. Uh, Tom Swan. Point of order. We need to vote because the question has been called. The question was called for the he, he's motion. He's asking for something, but I'm just, yeah. it all pertains to it. Go ahead. I requested for the new council. This is a this is a DNR administrative rule. We're comparing with the Rivier County General Code. And I want to ask if the Supreme Court decision Chevron doctrine has anything to do with uh, the change that might limit our ability to refer to the Ministry of Code for, uh, for this change? It does not affect your ability to refer to it. Okay, you it's can not statutory, though, so uh, I mean, you know, Supreme Court justice whether or not the bolt, you know, the, the reference to a bolt launch could be changed by the legislature to include snowmobiles and ATVs and everything else. I With think all that's due a respect hypothetical. respect to Supervisor Gustafson, it's our corporation council that does our and point of order. It's a hypothetical. We called the question. We right. called the question. Right. And voted so on the question. So now you go forward. Right. We have been asked to have a, a vote here by machine, though. Got to see if they can do that. Mr. Chairman, so we're voting on this on this uh, resolution, or are we voting on having it sent back to? No, no, no that's all done. It was withdrawn by Supervisor Gustafson. This is a consent. No, no, no. That's what it says. That's what it says. That's what it says. That's what it says, Julie. It wasn't the consent. This was pulled from consent. Right, that's why it says that. It was pulled from consent. That's why it showed up that way. That's the question. That's why it is. Right, I know what you're saying. But that's where it come from was the consent calendar. It was pulled from there. So they got to retype it over now. Yep. It's up there now, you should all have it on your things. 
If you approve or go yeah. along with it, you say yes. If you don't, vote no. And if hit you, save. Pardon? And, and hit save. save. And then save. Yes. Yeah. 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 Vote at all. Save. Not yet. Sure. I'm trying to explain here. I did too. I voted twice. Supervisor Gabbert. Supervisor Gabbert. Supervisor Gabbert. Supervisor Bender, did you hit save? Passed 32 to 2. Okay, now we're into resolutions. Resolution 39.09 2024, authorizing the borrowing of not to exceed $8,120,000 and authorizing the issuance of sale of obligation promissory notes, therefore. Supervisor Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve resolution 039-09-2024, the authorizing of uh, the borrowing of not to exceed $8,120,000 uh, and authorizing the issuance and sale of general obligation promissory notes thereof. Second. Seconded by Challenger. I'm waiting to see the speakers. Vice Chairman Fari. Uh, thank you. Am I on? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you will note this vote requires a three-fourths vote, which is definitely proper procedure, uh, and therefore I will call for a recorded vote. Thank you. Supervisor Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, three things on this. Number one, I'm uncomfortable to always just creating a bond um, and an obligation to the residents of this county. The, the second one, um, as you look at the, the potential borrowing um, list, 
Um, please note, let me say first, absolutely no one in this county as an employee or staff member or even a private entity should work in a building that is in a state of disrepair. However, when I look, you've got of this $8.1 million, you've got almost $650,000 going to the Nina Human Services building and a little more than a million dollars for the Albrecht building. So a question is at what point do we say um, really need to start looking at something else rather than putting this kind of money into a really old building? And that leads to a space needs study as far as some other things. No problem at all for me on fixing and repairing the roads. And the other part that makes me uncomfortable is putting this obligation on the residents and there's cash in the bank left over from the Spirit Fund. Thank you. Supervisor Challenger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I want to note one, first of all, these projects have all already been approved by the board. We voted in favor of the capital improvement plan uh, at the beginning of the year. And when we do that, we approve the funding coming out of the general fund. And so this resolution is really not about whether or not any of these projects should happen. They're all happening already. It's about what is the funding mechanism. Uh, so this is, this is merely to make the funding mechanism come out of uh, a, a general obligation bond as opposed to the general fund. This is the, this is the process that the county has used for for as long as, as long as I've been on the board to approve these projects and then come back for, um, uh, for, for, for a bonding amount that covers the amount that we need. And then the second thing I wanted to say is Winnebago County has a really, really low level of debt. Um, and one of the, one of the credits to the, to, you know, to the, to the way that that runs is that a small amount of our levy goes to paying off that debt each year. Uh, and so, um, uh, as we have, you know, as we have in the past, uh, kind of kept uh, around a $10 million uh, general obligation issuance each year, that keeps the tax, the tax levy, especially for debt, uh, fairly low. Um, so I just wanted to note, you know, compared to a lot of other counties, we have an incredibly low uh, level of debt. This is, this is a pretty low amount uh, for us to be borrowing, especially given uh, the immense amount of projects uh, that we have coming before us um, and continues to keep continues to keep Winnebago County in a pretty good position as far as our uh, all, the, all the kind of debt metrics that are typically looked at. Thanks. Supervisor Bender. I'd just like to comment too that we're borrowing at, at like 3.75. I know Paul most of our investments are, are yielding over 5% so if we took the money out of savings, we, we'd be losing a percent and a half. So why would you do that? You know, if, if somebody's going to basically pay you five and a quarter percent and loan you the money for three and three quarters, you've got a positive cash flow every year. So it, it wouldn't make no sense for us to cash our investments in. Tomorrow they're going to cut probably the rate and, you know, the investments are going to start going down. So if we're going to borrow money, now's the time to borrow it, you know, while we're still getting a, a higher yield, over 5% on our investments, and they're going to borrow us this at three and three quarters. So in my opinion, it would be foolish not to borrow it because you're going to make basically hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of this loan if you kept your $8.7 million in, in a CD or an investment to what you're going to pay in interest on this loan. Supervisor Hintz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Supervisor Hanson brings up a point that actually was just touched on this morning when I sat in for my uh, my budget meeting with facilities and property management, and I just want to say that within the next five years, we're probably looking at fifty million dollars worth of maintenance on our buildings, um, and that's why we are constructing a master plan to look forward to the future, and we we have. Um, a company who is helping us create that master plan and they will be, pro be providing us input on that and we will report on that when it comes time but that is not part of this thank you not seeing any other questions and not seeing anyone on teams or zoom 
All those in favor signify well, to undo it by votes. Vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We'll do it by machine. I think I know how it went. If you're in favor of the borrowing of 8,120,000, Vote yes. If you're not, vote no. And then don't forget to save. Passes 29 to 5. The reason it isn't showing up on the screen is they have a problem with one of the computers again tonight. So 29 to 5 that passed. Resolution 040-09-2024, fixing the compensation of the county executive for, for the four-year term commencing on April 15, 2025. Supervisor Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to make a motion. We approve 040-09-2024, the resolution fixing the compensation for the county executive for the four-year term commencing uh, April 15, 2025. Uh, personnel and finance voted 5-0 on that. Supervisor Hanson. Okay, Supervisor Hanson. Who, who, who was the second? Supervisor Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm wondering, uh, what's the, if somebody could tell me what the percentage of increase this is? 2%? Someone just said 2. Oh, wait, no. No, no, no. Well, I can answer that. Supervisor Cox. Yeah. We, we chose to discuss. Um, 2025 as being part of the compensation package that did not get to the executive. Uh, we chose to make that 3% to give him cover on that compensation package that was approved for the rest of the, uh, and then we went on to say 2027, 2028, and 20. Uh, the end of, uh, to the end of term, we went 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. Okay, the numbers are pretty much all the same. The uh, three percent would add an additional four thousand uh, two hundred dollars. The um, two and a half percent would add annually. Three thousand six hundred and three thousand seven hundred, three thousand eight hundred. As you uh, go through the, you know, the various steps, the fringes are at fifteen percent. Okay. I'm, I'm wondering as well, how does that increase compare to the increase that um, our general employees receive? Um, what percentage did they receive? Nurses, cops, um, highway, human services, everybody else. What, what percentage was the rest of the, did the people get? Supervisor Cox. Generally speaking, uh, the compensation package uh, was at about 3%, a little over than that. Uh, the merit increase after that was another 2%, which was uh, given just after the compensation package, if you recall, just after the compensation package was enacted, the first of the year. Thank you. 
Vice Chairman Fari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I reviewed the uh, uh, meeting where this was discussed by the PNF committee. Uh, obviously, for those that did that, there was uh, another proposal from a supervisor, and I really have to applaud that for c committee for reaching a compromise uh, that we see before us tonight. Uh, I certainly will support this. I think it's adequate and I think it's within the parameters of what our employees have received through their compensation increases. Thank you. Supervisor Gustafson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's uh, $20 for the uh, phone ringing jar. So for our Christmas party at the end of the year, all I ask is I, I just request a roll call vote on this. Thank you. Supervisor Holt. Thank you. I want to say, although I wasn't at this meeting um, as a committee member, I do support this. Uh, it is in range with what all uh, executives at various organizations are receiving, in addition to being in line with what the employees are receiving, even if uh, slightly less. And I do believe that pay, the base pay um, that we're starting from is also in line. It is almost exactly the average of what our um, partners are across other counties of our size. And I support it. Okay. Supervisor Burrell. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to and the, the team to put together the work in the packet, the external benchmark versus other counties, uh, particularly from the perspective that we want to attract and keep good people. We got to attract and keep leaders. Uh, and again, it goes across the entire leadership team because really that helps set the stage for a well-run county. So fully support and to commend the work that was done. Thank you. Not seeing any other ones. We'll do a uh, vote on your machines. If you're in favor, vote yes. If you're not, vote no. And then don't forget to save. without you on this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it passes 33-1 and 1 abstain. 33-1 and 1 abstain. Vice Chairman Fari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I vote to adjourn. Motion made and second adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Adjourned.